Welcome back, everybody, here to your coverage of the Dota 2 Championship League. I'm Tabby One. And I'm Milk. And we are here for game number two, Virtus Pro going up against the Alliance. Of course, if you are joining us, welcome everybody to the Daily Motion live stream for the Champions League. If you haven't checked out the website, it's d2cl.org for your English version, and you can check out the Twitter of it all too. They, they do little competitions. We had Dota 2 Lounge actually giving away items yesterday. Oh, I remember that. We did that during the TI qualifier as well. Yeah, yeah. We, we, that was that was some good times. We have flashbacks the last time you were actually here in the studio. Great supply of items. Dota yeah. Lounge. Great supply of ideas from the community to actually win those items as well. Actually, right. uh, this is still my favorite. Oh, uh, yeah, because we, we still have these things in the studio. The Scroobic. 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 Good times, people. Good times. All right, let's jump ourselves uh, over into our draft time. So we'll go bottom and bottom, and uh, we will check it out. So Alliance going to be on the Radiant side this time around, and Virtus Pro over on the Dire side. Now, Malk, VP... Things weren't really right for them in the last game. That wasn't very, a very good ball game, no. Uh, I think it ended up, what, 22-3? I it think the only one died in, dying in the last fight was S4, and he was sitting on an Aegis. So Alliance nothing went Virtus. Pro's way, and I'm, I'm no. expecting a lot more of them. It, it seemed to me as if Virtus. Pro had really picked up on what's good in this version, or at least halfway Virtus. through. Like They had the Pogna and the Lycanthrope, two heroes we've seen been played a lot. Um, and they had the idea behind it. They just mm -hmm. didn't have the execution, or better yet, Alliance was just too good for them to uh, to handle. It is kind of hard too when you try up like new strategies like this. Like there's some teams out there which are happy to try new strats up against, but Alliance is one of those ones that like even when they're trying new strats, they'll still punish you because the the coordination of Alliance is just. Amazing, really. The thing about Alliance, in, in the previous game at least, they w weren't really trying out a new strat. They were just playing what they knew worked because they've played it so many times. Like S4 on the Magnus Dino is probably Max. his most played hero, despite not at all playing it Alliance's throughout the summer. To pick. It's probably still the hero he's played the most in his pro career. So mm -hmm. that was just a, a very typical Alliance lineup and it worked perfectly. Yeah. Well... You knew the hero was going to appear at one point tonight. Yeah. Actually, I was sitting on the other side of the fence saying, I don't think this hero is going to appear tonight, but then NS decides to ban it directly against Admiral Bulldog, Alliances taking out the Lone Druid, them. as well as taking out the Nature's Prophet. And we get Lich. Now, Lich so far has been played offlane. He's been played offlane. And he's been played offlane. And then offlane dual lane. And that's basically summary of Lich so far. I think this is going to be an offlane dual lane, because I really don't see... Like, there's no need to have him solo Five the offlane. I mean, remaining. it's doable, but there's no actual need to now that dual laning is so good, and you just share the experience with whoever you go with. Well, I remember I remember at one point he was actually run as an offlane solo, because he won that level 6 a lot faster. Alliance yeah, I mean, there's obviously pros and cons of doing both, but this way, for instance, if they do a Lich clockwork offlane, Lich can go down, ignore the creep wave, Sacrifice one of his own creeps, get the solo experience from it. Meanwhile, Clockwork is sitting in the lane and soaking up the other experience, and that way they mm -hmm. can actually <laughs> sort of get solo experience every time Sacrifice is up. So it's it definitely Virtus not bad Pro's by any means. You see, Virtus Pro picking up Magnus and Venom, so the two heroes that Alliance just utilized very well. Yeah. Um, more importantly, Visits isn't banned out, so I'm, I'm expecting it to be picked up. Mm hmm. I, I like this little ban out here by Ten S4 in the fourth one. And again, I'm going to refer to the to the Twitter ba uh, ban that happened between Five both Loder as well as Envy. Because Loder was saying, like, well, I really Loder hate Visage. And Envy was like, well, I'll pick. trade you a Lich any day. Because he sees Lich as, as a more a yeah. bigger problem. And there was one thing which stuck in my mind when I see that Pagna being picked Alliances up. Um, the pick. Loder said, you can do one thing against a Lich that you can't do up against a Visage. And that's push. And you can just melt down the towers. And Lich can't stop you from doing that, really. Like, he sacrifices creeps, but you're still taking away your own your own, your own, own forces to give you, what, a frost? It's it's just not enough, really. And now with VP's pickup, we get Venomancer, we get Luna, we get Magnus. The Luna, when played on the Radiant side, would normally go top lane. But for this one, it, I'm wondering if VP do even want to put the Luna up there. Or they throw Luna down towards the bottom lane with the Venomancer. Grab someone like a Rubik, so someone that's a little bit more aggressive and works well up against the clockwork, and just goes all out for this. I like that Moonrider pickup. I was definitely expecting the Visus pickup because it just seemed as if Virtus Pro was really annoyed with the fact that Alliance just completely destroyed them with their best heroes. So I wouldn't have been surprised if they just went for both Life Dealer and the Visits. Um, but the Moonrider is a really good pickup because pick. this lineup from Virtus Pro has so much synergy. 
It has five and five. It has the late game. It has the the lane dominance potential at least in in the Venomancer and of obviously the Magnus on the middle lane. Because regardless, being a melee hero, Magnus is still very difficult to handle on the middle lane. Once mm -hmm. he gets that bottle up and going into a arcane boot, he can just keep on spamming. That he can, that he can. And how is this really supposed to work? So I'm kind of feeling like Magnus and Luna. Uh, two opposite sides of what should be happening here. Like you got Magnus that drags everyone into one position, and then you got Lunas who who Eclipse kind of wants to just focus on one person, doesn't want to go on every single person, or is it meant to just be the physical DPS Luna then comes into play? Because obviously the glaives got reworked as well on Luna, uh, on on Luna, on Luna. Uh, so you basically got the bounce back and forth. Yeah, like she's it, definitely a better hero now. Uh, mm -hmm. we, s we probably still won't ever see anyone go Scepter on her, but in case they did do that, Queen you can actually land all pain. the Eclipse Beams Alliance's on the same target, which is pretty awesome. Get a Queen of Pain out here from Virtus Pro. This is <laughs> this is all out aggression coming from them. And they've left it, so the, the only hero that's left to pick up is now the supporter. But we've got a Magnus and a Queen of Pain in here. Both of which we normally look to see going towards the middle lane, unless you're Fnatic, at which point you run Queen of Pain solo. Well, Queen of Pain is always a great pickup because it's such a versatile hero and it has a huge like Ten burst damage seconds, potential in, in her spells. And she's very mobile and just generally hard to shut down if you don't have a lot of disables. And in picking a Lich first, you already Reserve time. sort of sacrifice your disables. It's not particularly easy playing Clockwork against the Queen of Pain either, so I think it's a great pickup. Only the Rubik is really strong against her. Um, and I'm going to say this once more. Virtus Necromicon Rose and Queen of Pain, it to used bend. to be the biggest trend back in the day. I was talking to Mania and Akira about this yesterday on Twitter. Uh huh. It's just such a great item choice for her, so come on, Virtus <laughs> you, Pro. You, you, Show you me some love for the You won't stop until a Necro book has been completed. N nope. Because nope. I, th I think Pugna was attempting to in the last game. Uh, we, 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 we wouldn't know. Like He couldn't even afford a Bell of Giant Strength. I don't know. He had, he had a Bell of Giant Strength and he had a Staff of Wizardry. Oh, he had those? Yeah, oh, he had that's, those. That's probably safe to assume he was going for Necromicon. But that was basically all he could get to before the, the game ended up. So maybe tonight, man. You've, you've got two games to try tonight. Got two games to try tonight. Yep. Because remember, guys, later on tonight we do have speed gaming, so we'll have uh, Eternal Envy playing up against Team Dignitas. I'm expecting great things out of speed gaming tonight. I gotta say, mm -hmm. they've been known to be one of the more innovative teams, uh, and I, I'm not really convinced. Like Dignitas is coming off a win at, at Full Sail University, but there wasn't really much competition there to begin with, and they did seem to struggle with some of these up and coming Americans. Uh, so I'm not completely convinced that they're in shape to even play up against the great EE Sama. Um, so I hope that Speed Gaming is going to throw out some interesting lineups and... Well, sp Speed Gaming and one of those ones, I just quickly did a oh. bit of double check too, because they also played the Lycan. Eternal Envy played the Lycan uh, two games ago. Them. Yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that Speed Gaming realizes that pushing is what this version is mm. about. Like That's the reason why they brought back Shadow Shaman in the solo mid as well. Exactly, Shadow Shaman, I was about to say... The Lycanthrope, as you were saying earlier as well. Virtus I'm guessing Pro's Beastmaster might be played as well with, with the aura and everything, like we were saying he yeah. brought it up yesterday. I, I still want to see what happens, because I, 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 I did a bit of a poll recently, and also listened to uh, a little bit of the Fragbite live stream the other night, and I was I was pinning that Venomance would be the new support hero, hands down, amazing hero, able to scout out Roshan, of course, his, and with his wards being buffed up, it's like, booyah, they're worth more experience, who gives a crap? Um, Hani, when I was casting with him, Ten said that Skeleton King... Meaning should be the newest one well, um, coming in. But if, he, he before you continue, I want to I wanna stress the fact that Honey always, always, and I love this guy to death, like <laughs> he's probably do. my favorite person in the entire Dota community, uh -huh. but he has always had the dumbest ideas known to mankind. <laughs> and the only way we could ever win games with MYM <laughs> was if I did the exact opposite of what Honey demanded. So, but but can, can you deny his logic, though, for Skeleton Kick? You have now a range, lifesteal, aura... And he can get two stuns out at the start. No, no, I, ca I can definitely follow his logic. It's just... Uh, and he wants to combine it up with heroes like Dro Ranger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think Honey and Fnatic should just prove him right and, and do that. I, I really want to see it. Like, it sounds interesting on paper, but he, it's one he, of those... He, can't right. can, he, can't, he couldn't convince Fly before last night's game, so we didn't get it last yeah. night. At the same time, like, No Tail sitting there on the sidelines too going, Why, High Strog? Why do you hate my Meepo so badly? He, Meepo got so nerfed. Like, I was like, but you can have two 
At level four, it's like, yeah, there's much more to kill now. It, it's weird, though, because it's, it's already one of the hardest heroes to execute, both in public games as well as competitive gaming, and we mm -hmm. didn't really see it be picked up that much. And one, the thing I noticed the most in playing matchmaking or, or public games was the fact that whenever someone picked Meepo, everyone would instantly go, repick, repick, please, for the love of God, <laughs> repick. Yeah. And w whenever they didn't repick, it was like, yeah, Meepo 0 and 13, and then game was lost. So I'm, I'm curious to why he felt you needed to nerf the Meepo. Yeah, maybe I struck to take him. Maybe maybe it's also the reason why Techies hasn't hasn't arrived yet. It's just because Ice hates him. <laughs> it's, it's like Meepo and Techies are like Ice Frogs, like children when she like, wants to disown. Well, he has to create a freedom to remove them from the game then. Like. Well, th that'll be good. Maybe he can remove out that uh, that uh, Phoenix hero at the same time. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so a Doom pickup coming up last from Alliance. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm desperately hoping for an, uh, an Aghanim Scepter on him. I would love to see that. Just run around. We have have I haven't seen it once yet. If I, I, I don't know. Mr. Stasman might be able to be able to look it up right now to see if any player in any competitive game has even built an Aghanim Scepter up on Doombringer. It's like Enigma building up a new Aghanim Scepter. The good part about doing it here, though, is the fact that, first of all, Doom is primary tank alongside the Clockwork, obviously, but they have a Queen of Pain, and if he just runs around on top of it, he can ensure that anyone dies because the added r radius on, on the on the Scepter ra range now makes it so that Doom doesn't actually stop. Yeah, his, his Doom doesn't doesn't discontinue. Yeah, exactly. So that's just a, a great spell to have against the Queen of Pain, but also against the Moon Rider, because every, every ability of hers also instantly stops. She can't glaive any longer, and a Moon Rider that doesn't really have her attack strength is not really a very good hero. Mm-hmm. Well... Right now, let's run through our lines very, very quickly, and we'll see the lanes which we'll end up getting. So far, we have RK heading up towards the top lane as a Lich. Going to be a bit of a nuisance with his early ward. He'll be babysitting Admiral Bulldog by the looks of it as the Doombringer going off lane. It means middle lane solo will be s Force Clockwork. Loader takes up a DPS version of Marana, which seems to be the new in thing. Uh, and EGM will be playing the Master of All Magic. It is Rubik for him. And VP, they are going to do an aggressive tri lane. They've got the Crystal Maiden with now a Haste Rune. They have NS as the Venomancer, and they have Light of Heaven taking up this role as the Luna, uh, which means in towards middle lane, God Queen of Pain, and top lane is going to be a solo solo. It's an amazing uh, dual lane that Alliance is pulling out with the Lids and Doombringer, actually, because Doom can go into the jungle, take creeps from there, meanwhile Lids can do with would sacrifice on, on their own creep, so they can optimize experience gain so much that that lane is just going to be so very good. Ark is going to go down to the bottom lane instantly, notif noticing that VP has the tri lane down there, though. EGM's in trouble. I was waiting for this to actually hit, and then the Gale, so easy to connect up when you get the Frostbite to start off with, and then they give the bonus damage from Light of Heaven's Aura. Quick pick up and throw down, but the damage has already been dealt. EGM will take a fall, and Loda now finds himself alone on this bottom lane. And then S4. Like, how could you ask him to, to go up against God in this mid lane? Especially now that he knows he doesn't have a flying courier so early on. So the bottom movements can be really, really slow forward and back. S4 is getting some hard matchups in, in both these games. He was doing sub sublimely well last game in killing God off and making him get the bottle early on. This game, however, it's an even harder matchup at Clockwork against the Queen of Pain. There's no way Clockwork should even be able to stand in the lane. Mm -hmm. around level 3, actually. Especially when you can't pull him so many consumables anymore because of the way they changed around the tangos. That too, so like, unless he does extremely well in last inning, and we can see he's not, he's 1-1 one one right now. And get his, he, d he has saved up for the bottle though, so he's gonna get the bottle out eventually. But God is just gonna have a field day on the middle lane. He's already up to 9-4 and four against the 1-2 and two clockwork. So it's that's like, that's like you need to wait for the rotation lane. time, isn't it? Like, it's... Like, then again, where is it going to come from? Like, EGM is currently trying to deep ward. Lich is just trying to find some levels and pulling on the bottom lane and sacrificing a little bit of what's going to go the way of Votus Pro. Uh, but no one can come to help out S4 in the mid. Like, it's not like a normal Alliance roster where you've got, like, an Enchantress coming out of the tree line or something along those lines. There's nothing like that. It's every man for himself in this lineup, even top lane. Admiral Bulldog, one-on-one -on -one with Solo. Yeah, Alliance should actually be losing all of their lanes at, at this point in time, especially with the first blood, first blood coming out on EGM's Rubik. So Virtus Pro is looking in fine shape to, to win all three lanes, because I, I think 
and Magnus should have the upper hand against the Doombringer simply because of their natural item. Oh, EGM's in trouble again. He's got Telekinesis straight away. Arrow's gonna fly in, connecting, connecting in on NS, and now EGM turns to Telekinesis, gonna pick up the Luna, or maybe not. The Starfall will go in Line of Heaven, and NS is rather low on life. And EGM, maybe there's a chance for Rasa. Uh, yeah, he's a little bit too close. Picked up, dragged back down again, and one last attack from the Mirana will get the kill. Should be losing all their lanes, but VP, they just seem to be able to be whittled away with their life points. Didn't really seem as if they were communicating much. Smile was standing back way too long, like the other two pulled out, and he could have easily retreated with them without getting caught, yet he stayed and fought like a man, too Russian style. Well, Smile would just look at it one way and just say, we should be fighting, why are we backing off? This is interesting, though. If you look at the middle lane, as far as caught up, a lot. He's How did he do that? On 11 CS. He was behind with, with 8 just earlier, but he's actually doing, been doing as many last hits as, as the Queen of Pain ever since then. So he's in fine shape already. Mm -hmm. And he's using the bottle refilling because we passed the 3 minute mark. This bottom lane, EGM's gonna come in close, and now it's Alliance is initiating, it's the rocket that came in from Clockwork in the bottom lane that gave him the extra DPS. Becomes a 1 for 1 trade, but Loda, there's also a large amount of damage dealt to Light of Heaven. Kind of saw that rocket being cast. I thought it was, oh, maybe that was just S4 getting CS. Then all of a sudden it flies towards the bottom lane. And Arsat, Clary's going to be triggered. The arrow, well off target from Loda. Arsat saw it coming and just, just shift his toes to the left. And the rocket's coming in again. This is really annoying now for a Crystal Maiden. That's really a destroyer of tri -lanes. If you have a, a clockwork that's getting uncontested experience on, on, on a lane, he can really hurt tri-lanes and normally we see clockworks we've seen a lot of clockwork even before the pets go going into the middle lane especially from from china and, and most notably probably from cty mm -hmm. um, but normally in in western dota at least we see it on the off lane meaning he doesn't really have the ability to rocket spam the tri-lane but you can see how much it actually works with it oh. oh trouble right now might have been a god bit of a 3D he's in. way too close I don't think S4 is even going to die. Uh, he should. Oh, he's he got, he's got Venomous Scale as well as Tick, but he's using Actually. the Bottle Charge. He's going to hide in the tree line for the moment. And now he's got enough. He's going to hook shot up and even pick off NS, giving a double kill for S4 in the mid. Wow. Okay. Definitely an over-aggressive blink. <laughs> over-aggressive blink, but also just phenomenal play for, <laughs> from S4. What a player. Probably a reason to why they won TI so handily as they did. Oh, about the grand final, but going through the group stage, they were definitely considered the best team. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. After all of that, at least he'll get a little bit more space in the middle lane. As, uh, well, I say space, where's S4 going to roam back out to? Didn't TP out, he's waiting for it instead. Rocket spamming up towards the top lane. Admiral Bulldog, a player which we haven't even really looked at for that offlane. They're probably looking to kill the Queen of Pain again now with that Admiral Bulldog 6. He has those face boots so he can really run in on her real fast and maybe get off the Doom before she can blink away. It's all about that reaction time, but the fact that he has those face boots enables him to, to get in close enough for the Doom. Because what you often see with, with the Doom trying to gank a, a hero with an escapability spell is that he barely misses the Doom cast. So those face boots are essential to actually get it off. Mm -hmm. That and they deal a ton of damage to creeps. <laughs> and everyone else. Let's get a quick pause out here. Just needs a second by the looks of it. And we're good to go again. Don't know what the hell happened there, but we'll go with it. As NS now starting up with Line of Heaven. So, uh, kind of been a while since we've seen Venomans using Plague Wars to farm up some Ancients. God. And uh, it doesn't really help when you keep getting burned out like that. It doesn't help when S4 can't get himself out of the cogs either. And God, you know he wants to. You know he wants to. That's a blink scream and ulti. But does he even have a mana pool for that? No. No, no, no. And and the risk of, of cocks, because the second he blinks in, those cocks are just going to go off. And unless God is exceptionally lucky with his with his positioning, he's going to get hit by them. And there's no way he can combo then. Mm hmm. Arsat's going to come in. Clockwork latches up. God's still going to come in. The cogs push it back. And then the doom onto God. Admiral Bulldog's rotation timing, absolutely perfect here. And that's the death of God. Sergei will go down here in the mid. 
burning underneath Admiral Bulldog. The phase boost let him keep up as well with the score shirt level 2. And NS, well, he'll gale him up. And now Admiral Bulldog just TPs out. There's a skewer down, and that'll interrupt Admiral Bulldog, especially with the with the Oh wait, wait, what? Oh, he's gonna die. He's got he's got the moon he's got Luna he's got um <laughs> Where am I gonna go? Run to the rose pit. Yeah, in in, in. the pink's coming out from Loda to say oh, hiding in there. The very last second. Was so close to Solo noticing him. He's oh, he's actually gonna suicide instead of trying to run out. I think he could get out. I think he just realized he could get out too, and then he <laughs> bashed the best. <laughs> oh god, that was unlucky. <laughs> they they saw the rotations come up. Okay, we'll TP out of the top lane. Oh, maybe not. There's that Sonic wave. <laughs> Save for a rainy day to kill off a lich. I think at this point, Virtus Pro should be pacing themselves happy for getting any kills whatsoever. Oh, chat trivia time. I, I missed this one for the last game. With 30 appearances, which has been picked the most in competitive matches so far during 6.78? 30? 30 appearances since... Yeah. See, they're not that easy, are they? 6.79, sorry, yeah. The the latest patch. Not I, I can't guess, right? No, you, we can guess. We can guess. It's oh. it's for people to play at home. It's so, you're going to say blood... It's no, not blood no, seeking, you noob. Uh... I would actually go um, with, because I, I kind of want to say Crystal Maiden. Okay. I kind of want to say Crystal Maiden, but I'm also feeling the Luna. Oh, and S. Has Luna been picked that much? I don't they, see. That's that's why I'm not quite sure about the Luna. <laughs> Sports can't jump up, and it's just not getting himself out. This one, the murder will come. Even Lotus arrow flies through, and S4 will TP himself back out again. That's commitment to murder. It's typical, typical greedy arrow coming out from the order. It was just in case S4 needed help. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the only reason, man. It's in third place. Ah. First Dying's place hero is not in this is game. Is it? Is it Siren? Naga Siren? Would you say not? No, see, Na Naga's been banned up a little bit too much. Huh. That's why, that's why I wouldn't want to go with Naga Siren. But because it's not being picked up in this one, it may be the only one because it's the other consistent support hero that would be played. Lich normally we banned out anyway. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it is Siren. Huh? We'll just have to wait and see, man. I have, haven't watched nowhere near enough <laughs> 7 9 to actually know. Well, you'll get educated today. Uh, Loda, how's he looking right now? Yasha build for him. It's going to be coming out, so fast movement speed. Hasn't finished up the full ring of a Cooler or his Magic Wand die. That's just leaving you as a basic stick. But I'm wondering about his timing too. Like, what is Loda meant to be bringing to this game? Like, he finds up a Yasha, what's next? I think it's like, he's just a backup DPS that's free farming. Uh, Alliance has been known to, like, every 10 games or so, they pick out the Priestess of the Moon for their late game because he's so versatile and they like to use the, the Priestess of the Moon ultimate. Um, which almost saved that Moon Bulldog by the best from Roshan. And it, where's S4 going? There's three players over here. Didn't even look to see this stack happening. Where they're using Luna and Solo to try and clean it all up. Luna, who doesn't have a single point up in Moonglaives as well. That's something which I, I was... No, oh, which game was it? That there, was, there was a team that did it recently, and it was like... It was only yesterday. <laughs> it had to be somewhere in the Champions League. Uh, where you actually only went the two points up in the Lucent Beam. Oh, oh, oh S4's gonna hit the... Uh, yep, there we go. The Crystal Maiden. And now Eclipse from Light of Heaven. Revenge kill. With an over as well from Arsat. They get him out safely. I was worried he's going to walk himself into the cogs and burn. But not going to happen. Then on bottom lane. Sergei's going to rotate down. He's going to sting to slow down Loader. He's already used his uh, his leap. The arrow's going to completely miss. an EGM. TP comes in a little bit too late. Maybe they go for more because God's still got the end of the taste rune here. So Blinks over. Screams on him. The Venomancer Wars now in fact blocked him in. NS. Stick charge will keep him alive across the tower. And God goes out west. A solo RPs onto RK. They are throwing everything they've got to get these kills against Alliance. Very uncharacteristic play by, by Alliance. But... Everything really starting with Loda saving his, his ultimate because I think he, if he just ulted right away, he could have gotten away safe. Mm -hmm. He chose to leap against the hasted Queen of Pain. Not exactly the best decision. Well, you leap and then you've also got like all your other slows that'll be out of connect. Like your, your advantage of movement speed, you get a bonus 4% movement speed. That's not going to be enough to counter it out. It's one of the ungrateful, ungrateful scenarios of being a support player. You TP down or run down to help your, your carry player and then you... 
see the carry player die and you die Radiant alongside him. And then your other support attack. hero dies alongside him. Basically, it, it, it's the Dyer's ultimate taking it for the team. Oh, how's Admiral Bulldog looking? This is the guy who hasn't been taking it for the team. He's got 62 for 4 as far as his last hits go. I'm pretty sure his net worth, yeah, 5.1k with the 4 levels up in Devour. He is just farming up so much on this top lane. He even rotated in to get one kill. He does have one death to his name, but that's also not really a bad thing. Are we are we uh, expecting another Shadowblade? Do you think Admiral Bulldog is completely unfazed by the fact that Shadowblade has a 10 no, it, In this game, I think he's going to realize that his supports aren't getting enough farm, and we'll see Vladimir as a mech uh, coming out from him would be my would be my gamble on this one. No way, no way. No? no. On Admiral Bulldog? On you Admiral you Bulldog, don't no think way. he would support? No way. <laughs> God's going to come out of his infis. EGM's just around the neighborhood, and you'll see God. Remember, we are in, into our, our next day, nighttime cycle. We're only 12 minutes in, but the cycle's now only four minutes in between each other. Arrow flies up. It was looking for the rotation out. Looks like Ennis has accepted the fact that he's dead. A lot of heroes committed to that, though. Not necessarily a bad thing for, for Virtus Pro. I think Alliance were expecting more of a 5v5 fight then. That's what I'm... Uh, I Radiant tend to refer to as the attack. tactical feeding coming out from the Venomans. Scouting out for Alliance heroes sitting on and wasting a lot of their time yeah. allowing Light of Heaven to farm up. Tactical feeding. You know, problem with this Venomancer, he's not tactically feeding correctly. He's got kills to his name, man. Oh, he does? Uh, actually, what, was, was it you that told me this or was it Syndrome that told me this? That the only objective of a Venomancer in a game is to run in, get a Gale on more than one hero, and throw your ulti. After that, you can die. Yeah, and that, it, does, it doesn't matter after that point. As long as you do that, you can die, and it doesn't matter. You've done what you need to do for your fight. Well, it, it sounds about right, coming coming late game, but I mean, early on there's a lot more to it than the, just that. Mm. But that would be the basic scenario for a Venomancer. Well, observers and sentries, that's a Radiant Sentry Ward down there, but obviously it doesn't give any kind of vision at all. And they're gonna find Arke. God, with a quick jump in, Lich getting caught out. This, it just feels like a really uncharacteristic draft from Alliance. Like I said it before, man, they don't have rotating or any kind of playmaking heroes. It's not as much just the draft, it's, it's the play overall. They keep getting caught up one by one in some iffy situations. I'm wondering if you do actually get your wish. If it does mm. just turn into an Agonims. Nah, he probably would have picked up the point booster by now then. So I'm, I'm, I'm still betting, uh, banking on the... Uh, Shadow Blade? I don't know, we're 14 minutes in. He's not really that farmed. Like normally, if, when you're playing a Doom and, you, and you're farming, you, you might want to get the Shadow Blade up at around the 13 minute mark or something like that. So I'm not completely convinced he's going for the Shadow Blade. Maybe just into an Assault Curse at this point in time and just want to tank up. Maybe even a Pipe. A Pipe would not be bad here. Pipe has actually been buffed in this version and against the lineup from BP. Loader, go in this. Go in this. They're going to pop the dust. RP as well. He doesn't have a leap in time. Venomance has already got the kill on him. And the skewer to demolish the rest of the trees as well from Solo. VP waited so long to kill off Loda just then. And in the meantime, the top tower goes down as well. But it's still worth it for, for VP and, and... Oh, I want to I wanna throw you another ball here for Admiral Bulldog then. Radiance. Just, just, just to throw it out there right now. I'm not going to offer them anything. Just something in my mind. S4, ulti up. Has to get himself away. RK with the Frost World going to slow down NS. And RK still with an uncast ultimate. Sitting up his sleeve. He hasn't, had, hasn't found a moment to use it once. And you're right. 100%. I should never doubt you, Melk. I will never doubt you. Ever again. I was actually questioning it myself. I think it's a bit of a... Oh, it's still, it's still fine, but... It's a fear approach. It's, it's the only way he can really come, come in close. Especially on heroes like Queen of Pain and Magnus before they blink. So mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a must pick up if he doesn't go for for full out tank and fight five and five and the thing about alliance something that really puzzles me normally we always see alliance being one of the best teams in gathering up and fighting five and five especially when they're on the receiving end which they have been for the past five minutes yeah um, but in every scenario we've seen them give up kills right now has been alone like they keep being caught off alone yeah loader recently at the bottom tower no one from alliance was there to help him out we saw Akidai in their forest no one was they there. don't see it coming the one time they actually did gather up, all they got was the Venomancer, so... Su successful play coming out from VP, and they've been doing a lot of this stacking and, and pulling, and... Oh, Alliance are gonna come in, and they're gonna find him smack bang in the middle of this, and Admiral Bulldog with the Shadow Blade in close, and who's he wanna doom up? Light of Heaven's already dead, that's some big damage coming out from Admiral Bulldog. 
And there's four still got ults available. He's got three euros to hook, but he also knows that Solo has to have his RP off cooldown in a couple of moments time. He's still got another eight seconds left. Arrow flies up, unable to connect from Loda. The bottom tier one tower's not down either, so Loda doesn't have a quick access in. Then S4, you know he wants to jump. And oh, Admiral Bulldog now going to show himself. Dooms up God. The jump does come in. And God, well, it's only, it was only one hit that came out from Arcade's ultimate. There is still that Doom over on God. But EGM in close as well. He stole the RP, but there's no mana to use the damn thing. And S4 slowed down by NS. These Plague Wards really going to work. But Admiral Bulldog right behind him. Reloaded actually has the damage to pick off that Magnus. And NS back behind the tier 2 tower now as well. Now this tier 1 tower in the bottom lane can go down. And Alliance are the first fight that actually goes their way. The whole reason that VP lost that fight so badly was because Solo completely misjudged where to blink in. He actually blinked in beneath the Doombringer instead of on the, on the three heroes standing on, on top in the jungle close to the secret shop. Mm -hmm. So he had to run the entire way because he'd already, already whiffed his, his blink. And I think even the... Uh, his uh, s slay, whatever. What what, what, what? what? His gliding move. I it's forgot the name of. His gliding move? Are you talking about Scorched Earth? Are you, are you no, no, no. The Magnus. The Magnus Skewer. Yeah, Skewer. There we go. <laughs> Gliding move. Yeah, two months Hearthstone. <laughs> so, like, you never down that card. fight could have definitely gone in, in VP's favor, especially because of the Wift Lich ultimate. Um, but yeah, the Shadow Blade from Doombringer locking down the Queen of Pain was definitely playing into their favor there. Well, you were talking about Necro books. I think you might be right, man. We got a staff of wizardry and a bell of strength on God right now. Yes, sir. and he's almost got enough money for the full for the, for the recipe part of it as well. Well, four staff for uh, for Arsart. and as we're, we, we're going no mech, we're going no mech lineup. No, we've got mech over on Solo. Also, Necrobook, aside from being buffed in this version, is also extremely good against the Alliance lineup. Not only does Doom have the Shadow Blade, but we also have the Priestess of the Moon Ultimate. So. Once you get that oh, Doom, God, they're going to pop off the dust right there. Looking for Admiral Bulldog. The arrow's going to fly in as well. Doesn't connect on anybody again. Loader, I don't think he's hit a single arrow all, all tonight. Like at all. And Arsat, his creep wave turns against him. He used his one charges. I hearing S4 actually latch up because he managed to catch God. So they will take three hero kills on this bottom lane. Tough life. You're never going to see this in front of them. Are we actually on a zero percent arrow? I I don't know about you, man, but my like my brain is still waking up a little bit tonight. But so <laughs> much, much like the uh, tactical feeding from Venoman, so what Loader does is just fire <laughs> arrows left, right, and center to scout with them. Uh -huh. Doesn't actually care to hit them. He just want to see what's there. At least that's that's the story we could tend to make Loader feel better about himself. Definitely. Now, movement now coming by Alliance. So, getting picked off one by one doesn't seem to work out for the Niners. They're going to move up, and already Admiral Bulldog, like, his devout only just came up cooldown. But that's the Alpha Wolf that was controlled up by Light of Heaven. He was using it to scout as well as to give them a lot of damage during the fights and when they were doing the stacks. And NS, I know he wants to Gale on S4, but s 4 still got ulti as well. So if he gets in trouble, he can ulti himself out to a hero. That's why EGM's walking further away right now. And Solo, oh, oh, wait for it. Wait for it. Admiral Bulldog's coming in. He doesn't have Doom available. The RP's going to snap onto the Eclipse as well. Sonic Wave, Lich Alma bounces up, and it only gets one hit out in Solo. And now Alliance, they're forced to buy back the clockwork. Admiral Bulldog man fighting up against Line of Heaven, who will go down, because Loda, he's sat on the high ground that entire time, leads himself away as Necro units and God both run after him. And Alliance lose everybody in that fight. S4, I think, is looking for one last snipe off. With, to be solo, but he's got no vision there. With a the level 2 hook shot, it's also out of range. It's interesting that neither mechanism was actually used in that fight. <laughs> really? <laughs> Despite the heavy AoE on both sides, but this just goes to show that the VP lineup is still at a, at a point in time where it's too strong for Alliance to actually cope with in, in terms of 5 and 5. We, we saw the RP coming off because he couldn't get Doom off. Doom was simply still on cooldown. Mm -hmm. So once the RP went off, you had the, the, the Luna ultimate and the Queen of Pain ultimate coming in. This is nothing that Alliance c could actually do, despite the, the little advantages they have now. Is that actually book two? Yes, book two already on co-op, 21 oh. minutes in. Well, I thought we'd, we'd never see the day. <laughs> Your day has come, man. Go for him, go for him. Solo was thinking about it, but his blink tag looked like it was on cooldown still. Ah, and you used Screw to farm with. Interesting. Mm. And S4 just rotates around. This is, this is the reason why they, well, they know what happens around the ancient stack area. Why is he waiting here? Is he, he waiting to jump on bottom lane? Yeah, he's needing the support though. Does Rubik pick up Link from Queen of Pain? Um, Rubik died. ended up dying, so he couldn't get anything. Yeah. Or would have lost whatever he did pick up anyway. And Mirana ultimate going to be used. It's oh, well, this is perfect timing for them as well. 
Oh, if Light of Heaven had ran into that. Uh, he's going to run back up again. He actually saw him in this. Uh, uh, the sentry ward just ca uh, caught him, so when he was standing uphill, he could s get a glimpse of the clockwork. Unfortunately for Alliance, they think they're okay there. They haven't thrown down another sentry ward. It's kind of almost like very uncharacteristic of Arke. Like, Arke normally has observer wards and sentry wards in every single position across the map. There's not a single safe place to walk. Well, it's, it's a weird spot for them to go in and sentry. Oh. That's not actually a whole lot. 2k damage for... Well... Throughout an entire game for an item? Ah, oh, I suppose so. Oh, there's Midtown being denied up by the Doombringer, who now goes into his next item. So we get two BKBs appear, one for the Lunar and one for the Doombringer. But that's still gonna... It's, they're still not gonna make any much of a difference, like, Doom still goes through BKB. Yeah, but now he has to actually invest it in onto the Lunar instead of the Magnus or the Queen of Pain, and I don't think they can actually afford to do that, so... That's definitely a, a nice item for them to pick up. They only have one Doom to actually do with, and he needs to use it on either... Well, right now I think his primary ta target should definitely be the Magnus, because without RP, it's hard for VP to fight and hold them in place. Yeah. Plus, there's no mechanism on the VP lineup if they Doom him. I'm still just wondering, too, with Load, like, when's his DPS going to arrive? Like, he in that last fight, he ended up finding himself just sitting in this little region for a while and attacking. But his damage was rather minimal. Like, after the Starfall went, there goes your burst damage, and the Yasha follow-up damage isn't really enough. Well, he's not particularly in a hurry, and he's definitely not under-farmed. He has a Black King bar and a Yasha on, on his Pieces of the Moon, and we're 23 minutes into the game, so... He's just taking some time, almost. Yeah, but they have both the Doombringer and him against a, a Moon Rider. Magnus and Queen of Pain, while both decently good into the late game, they... First of all, they don't have the item builds to really scale into late game. The Chromicon is good, but it's... There's a long wave to the next item once you get that Necromicon up and going. And Magnus went for the mechanism, so his next natural item will either be the Refresher Orb, maybe even a Black King Bar, but it, it doesn't really make sense in this particular game. And then, of course, uh, Assault Caress. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be the Refresher Orb, though. And really just hope that God takes the uh, Doom every time. I could see this game go far yet. Like, we could see uh, a late game game. It, it does kind of look like both the teams don't want to push in just yet. Like, you, you've still got all the tier 2 towers still up, and everyone's still moving around their own jungles. No one's looking for that five-man fight. Alliance hadn't worked out nicely for them until that bottom lane fight. And VP, like, they probably want one, but they're and still not quite sure about what Alliance can dish out to them until they have their big items up and running. None of the teams actually did trying for Roshan, and I think an Aegis could really make a difference in one of these. There's your hero. Oh, it's Timbersaurus number one. Obviously. I completely forgot about that hero. Because with the changes to, to the off lane, the Radiant side too, Timbersaur is such more of a legit pickup now. So this is interesting. Alliance Radiant used pieces of the moon ulti to get in, didn't they? No, they actually didn't. They just ran on in. Because there's no ward control. There's two sentries down from, from the Dire side, but no actual wards. That's the Venomancer ward, though. Yeah, it's watching inside the pit. And Alliance move out. They got Frost Armor up on almost everybody here. EGM's the only one unprotected by the soul. And look what EGM's building into. Well, they, they, they changed the Rubik up. It's five seconds now on his ultimate cooldown. Yeah, he's like an invoker all of a sudden. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the day when you get both I when you get both Rubik as well as an invoker in the game. Want to watch S4 to see his initiation. You know he just wants to jump himself in, but not too far back past that tier 2 tower. Especially when the creep wave hadn't arrived yet. There's so many heroes. Which one does he want to get? Does he want NS to nail him down first? Does he want to remove out Crystal Maiden? Or does he try and go for one of the cores? He, he really needs to hit the Magnus. Like, going for one of the supports is not going to do anything. Well, he might have VP do misplays and blow their entire load on him. Mm -hmm. and, and make room for Admiral Bulldog to run in and doom Queen of Pain or the Magnus. But we go. generally, I think the best set up for them would be to, to hit the Luna and, and dish out a lot of damage before she can BKB and at least get her down to half HP, if not completely kill her. Mm -hmm. And that rocket scouting is not stopping for clockwork. They want to know exactly when VP going for Roshan. And rightly so too with that empower buff up and Luna getting in close and Venomancer being able to give all, all the wards as well. It won't take VP long. It won't take VP long at all. These fights are all going to come down to Solo and Admiral Bulldog. Whoever gets off a good Doom slash a good RP. S4 can, can, can also make a difference, but in general, it's those two heroes we're looking to, to see make 
make or break a good fight for either team. Mm. I don't think we're gonna see much splitting up in this game from now on. We might see a load of farm on its own and a lot of jungling coming out from the Doombringer, obviously, but in general, I think most of the he heroes are gonna, like, all the supports with the initiators are gonna stick together and run around together. We turn into five man data, basically. Yep. The only one who's not there is Queen of Pan at the bottom, but she can just TP straight back in on top of the tier two tower if needed. And Venomancer, well, now that's a nice, that's a nice uh, thing to take away from him. Because these wards also will carry the effect of the poison t uh, of the uh, poison sting of NS. Yeah, it's not really a uh, <laughs> that, it's that much of a desirable spell. I m I'd much rather get like a blink, or m maybe even a, a, a frostbite. But at the same time, though, if you're trying to siege up towers and push yourself in, you need to have like your front base. You need you need to have these wards down and running. Like now, there's had to be a TP back. Cameron Bulldog takes the damage to devour it up. Hearing a clockwork. Oh, yeah, she managed to latch up God. And that cancelled his oh. TP. Oh, wow. And he oh. was lifting his hands, too. He almost had that blink away. That was an expensive push from him. I was actually questioning whether or not Alliance should have backed off because God had used his book down there. So essentially, you had a Queen of Pain that had all her spells up, but, but not an actual item to, to assist in the fight. Uh, mm -hmm. So I felt like Alliance could have pushed down the middle tower if they wanted to. They got lucky with getting the, the Queen of Pain kill, though. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that would have been a lot of time invested. Dyer's top tower. A demon is on Lord now. That DPS are searching for on him. He's probably building the Monkey King bar, assuming that Luna's going for the butterfly later on. But at the same time, does he want to? Does he want to go straight into the MKB? Do you want to look down the lines instead of like Daedalus? I was actually wondering to see if he was going to go a Desolator throughout this game. Because there's still like that, like after you take a fight, how quickly can you push through these towers? How well can you do the damage during the fights? And you've already got the armor advantage because of the Lich. I think it'd be exceptionally greedy to go for the Daedalus. So it would be fantastic up against a Venno and a CM. If you can get rid of these guys quickly, that way Definitely, the rest of you guys you can focus. Like, Monkey King has still a lot of damage, plus it's the natural counter to a, to a Moon Rider. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're probably right in this one. I'm just a spitballing idea. No, no, no I'm, I'm sure he's probably going to go with, with your idea instead. <laughs> I'm not sure of that. I, I'm still thinking he's Monkey King, but I'm just thinking, like, what if he does go over aggressive on he's it? Sitting on 25, get 500 more gold, no, then we'll know. Yeah. Into Roshan we go. And the Rocker Spam's already coming out. Like clockwork. So Virtus Pro is in a position with their lineup where they can actually afford to stay in the Rose Pit and take down Roshan without mm. being. Look, oh, this look at NS. NS. He is he is trying to just keep him out, but then Clockwork, he jumps in, and now the Cogs, Roshan killed off by the Radiant. The, Ro the Aegis Immortal is still on the deck here. Light of Heaven trying to fight up against him, and now will take that Aegis Immortal with a full Eclipse going, but Loda with a double kill now. He is going the Monkey King Bar, trying to attack directly, and they get through the Aegis the Immortal. But the question is, can they kill him off again? Loda, Arrow, connects. NS is here in support, though, and it looks like they are just going to bail themselves out. Great in his initiation by S4. I'm actually surprised he managed to do that because Ennis was doing his utmost best to keep him from yeah. from hooking in. I, I just couldn't believe he managed to get Luna alone inside the cogs. Like, everybody else got pushed back in that. I can't believe they got the Roshan kill. <laughs> it had to be because on the moment when you jump in, so the stun already managed to hit on Light of Heaven. Yeah. And then he's like, well, Roshan's at the point where I just need to hit him once. And we've got this in the bag. I'd like to see that in slow motion. I, I think it might even have been Ake who got the... I think it was Ake? No, with, with the Nova. Nah, no way. <laughs> like, Nova deals one damage to Roshan or something. <laughs> well... Frost Blast, sorry. We can call it Nova. Nova? I still have trouble when I play Counter-Strike and I, and I see the shotgun. I was like, oh, I died to a Nova. There's a shotgun in Counter-Strike called Nova. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I've never played it. I've really? I've never played Counter Strike Go. I played a ton of 1.6. You must be one of those uh, few people that isn't uh, crossing the s crossing the streams. What do you mean? There's like I don't know if you saw it, but like Dendi was playing um, Counter Strike Go on the main stage of Starla in between the matches of Alliance and Navi during the grand final. Oh, really? He played Counter Strike Go uh, to to chill out. Doom's now going to go on Arsat. And maybe there's a chance for a denial right now. Like Admiral Bulldog, he pops the BKB to get this. But he's already been Shadow Striked up. Arsat turns around to try and help out. He accepts his fate. Or maybe he doesn't. NS, he was right next to him. 
Possibility of denial was there. Admiral Bulldog does get sniped off, and now that's also a gem on the deck. Ooh. Not as important for God, but when you have a hero like... I thought actually NS was going to pick that one up. That's um, a very greedy kill to go for for the Doom Ring as well. Spending the Doom on the Crystal Maiden would have given Virtus Pro a lot of momentum because they could push. They would literally have like one and a half minutes to, to push down any tower they wanted to because there's simply no Doom up for Alliance. So alone the fact that he invested Doom into the Crystal Maiden seemed a bit greedy. Then that he then died as well, even more greedy. Especially because mm. he was alone. He was completely oh! oh my! Oh man! And then TP out in the middle of the hook shot. Ah! Oh. He cannot be happy with that. Nope. Nope. Not at all. Oh, solo. <laughs> But at the same time, like, Doom did get the kill on the Crystal Maiden. Because Venomous didn't deny him. So, if, if you look at it from that, like, you still had, you still had a trade-off for the kills. You can still look at it from that angle. That loader. Ultimate Orb. Goes lifesteal instead. It's a casual Yasha for him. So we get Helm with the Dominator up for loader. We have Monkey King Bar as well. I wonder if you'd be lucky enough to find an Alpha Wolf. We've got Harpies and we've got nothing else. And again, the arrow. Just uh, scouting. Just uh, scouting. Uh, just scouting. Rubik. Looks like he's had to pick, pick up on the Crystal Maiden. S4. Not even using his ultimate for that one, but I assume using an Invis rune. But the only other way you could really catch out a Crystal Maiden when you got no vision up there. It's actually an interesting TP S4 did earlier with the hookshot where he, he TP'd mid hookshot. So the animation is, is channeling. I thought they changed that kind of stuff so it couldn't work that way anymore. Because I, I know they changed on, like, Storm Spirit, wasn't it? You, they changed him around so we couldn't ulti and TP. I don't know. Mechanics have never been a strong point of mine. Well, Hookshot should always drag you to the target that you go to. <laughs> but he got dragged, but then he just TP'd halfway through. So yeah, te technically, as long as the Hookshot is obviously started before the TP, there's no problem. Mm -hmm. well, I think that's a fine mechanic. That's for some beautiful plays. Alliance now going to go in. They take the tier 3 tower. And that's getting stunned up pretty hard. There's that one arrow that Lone is able to connect. is able to get the kill out. But S4, Blade Mail up. And now the Eclipse coming out from Line of Heaven. He pops his own BKB. Doesn't care about that much. At the same time, you're going to have Shiva's Guard, Admiral Bulldog, in the middle of that fight, surviving through the Quap Baldi. And Admiral Bulldog, that is one big Doombringer with the BKB triggered off. Five S come out from both Lunar as well as Magnus. With RP not being used, now it is. He wants Admiral Bulldog, but where's the skewer? It's on cooldown! Admiral Bulldog turned into a level death on him. And RK wants to fight more there. He still got a level 2 ultimate, which never got triggered during that fight. And Admiral Bulldog, you're still visible under that Necro unit, man. Screams going off, and Luna's attack as well. Rubik with a telekinesis stun actually stops the loose and beam from coming down. The star fall as well. They've got to get rid of it. And now Queen of Pain will get the kill. Dives in deep. Loda, Loda jumping from the other side. Able to get that hit off. But now he's frostbitten up. Can't leap again. But still has the high movement speed coming from that leap. Moving quickly. Earn charges and the sting. 28, 2, 3. Dead. We talked about this earlier. If you were Arca right now, you're going to be like, what the hell is my carry player doing? <laughs> I just died because my carry player had to go in for 100 gold in their base. Probably not too pleased with that. I I I, th I, I think uh, they know, they all accept that sometimes Loader has a brain fart. Oh, that wasn't even Loader, that was Admiral Bulldog. Oh, true. But that is, well, I, was Admiral Bulldog really that overcommitted? Yeah. He ran in there, it's like, ah, oh, Kashiva's got boys. You're yeah. not going to be ready for this. We get ourselves some kills and then they buy back. Obviously, never a great thing. But I think the most important part in that fight was the fact that Solo is really not having a good game on that Magnus. This is no S4 Magnus, this game. Mm. He like he didn't get off his RP in the first round, he just died instantly, and then the second time around, he only hit the Doombringer yeah. and died and, and instantly and then, and then after. <laughs> there was no team support for him. It's, it, the communication just seems off. He I is a stand-in, though. True. True. She was that also... Yeah, I was, I was wondering why the bonus damage was there. Like, they actually had uh, level 15 up against a level 4 le level death. Right. That, that's where his life points went. I don't think he's really expecting that. Or did, probably did the math on it, saying, oh, that level death is actually going to do that that large bonus damage, and then everything else in Alliance will turn around and throw at me. Um, but we do get to see for the first time an Aghanim Scepter Rubik. Almost got a Blink Dagger as well. That's going to be interesting, or a Force Death. This, this EGM player, man, he always gets so much money. 
Like, he's only got 77 last hits, but look, he's got 14 assists as this support hero. He's actually ahead of the Magnus in, in income. It was a gulp a minute. Magnus 344. Oh. Yeah. So, a little bit behind, but... but in, in his actual inventory net worth. Uh, in the net worth? Yeah, you're right. He's ahead by 400. It's also probably because Magnus has died four times. He got one kill. Yeah. Custom Bane now going to go BKBs. We use Moran Ultimate for Alliance to go high high ground. And everybody gets a little Frost Emblem next to them, apart from now EGM. And they're looking for that one person that's hanging on the Tier 2 tower or inside the jungle farming up. And no one's here. So, ulti, a little bit of a waste. But at the same time, it's not that long of a cooldown. We see God actually being close to his uh, Scythe of Vice now. He's sitting on 3200 gold and has that ultimate orb already. So that could potentially change things around for them because they can easily burst down one of the key heroes from Alliance side of things. Mm -hmm. They can gank down the the, um, the Priestess of Moon, something they've had a hard time doing ever since you got two buff. <laughs> we should watch pretty soon uh, as well to see the Roshan timer. It's going to flash up on our side of our screen. We'll have to do the math for it. There's your blink dagger you're talking about for EGM. Yep. But we'll see we'll see how long it's gonna take before Roshan's gonna respawn. Because this will be our next key place to fight for both these teams. Aegis to come up for the big man. So that's worth noticing that uh um, 124. Despite okay. both lineups having what you could generally consider as support heroes that are all potential five heroes in terms of farming. Yep. Uh, there's no real farmer on their support. They still have a, a, a clear set of role assignment. You see the Lits and the Venomans on, on their respective sides not having any items whatsoever. And then you see the Queen of Pain, oh, not the Queen of Pain, the Crystal Maiden picking up a Black and Barn, and obviously EGM on the Rubik sitting with a, an Agamem Sector oh. and a Blink Dagger. Might have to watch right now to see the steal times. Looking to trade off an Admiral Bulldog. He's starting up on the range racks, which is kind of funny considering the range racks, the, the changes on the racks thing. But Light of Heaven has just melted through the bottom and has, is just holding them off. He's used Venomancer Aldi. He's got a whole set of wards down as well. They use Fortification as well for the Dire Sign, and they're not coming back. Solo, Light of Heaven, and God, the three cores for VP, are pushing out and into that middle area with the tower going down. Blink out by Solo. The TPs are coming on the tower and EGM, he's going to get nuked down very, very quickly. Line of Heaven throws the ulti out. He's standing his ground to try and bring down the ranks rather unsuccessfully while God and Solo will bail out. But it becomes a melee trade-off for a full bottom ranks. I think Virtus Pro should place themselves very, very heavy with this trade. They got a, f a full side and, and the middle tower down, and they even got a kill. Oh, they got it. trouble. Actually, that's bigger trouble. There's no buyback for the Luna for a minute, and you got all the cores up for Alliance. No Rubik, though. Uh, Solo's God coming back. God is actually back. gonna go back in, into the base. He knows he can back out the, the racks, and he's gonna get it too with the help of the Necromicon. That's actually a lot of damage. Alliance is gonna lose this barracks. Yeah. Even if they TP home right now, he's still gonna get it. So he jumps, Necro uh, books him go, off go. cooldown. They use their fortification, but they're going to enter in. Stay, God, stay. I think you've... Oh, okay. So leave the books behind, and they bring the Queen of Pain back to fight. Range Rice goes down. Now Alliance have to look for the racks off trade here. They'll try and go onto this tier 3 tower. Still 30 seconds for the Luna, but she can buy back in 28 seconds and has the money to do so. But then RP... On to, where's your follow-up? God's in here, oh. and now Crystal Maiden BKB into the big old one, but Lich throws his old T out as well. We're gonna get some good bounces, in fact, right in the middle of them. Queen of Pain has to buy back, Crystal Maiden will buy back, and has to be destroyed off by Lona, and maybe he has enough to kill off Solo, yes he does. It's a double kill for him, and it's retreats back inside the base, and they buy back the Magnus as well, and he has to stay there for at least three seconds, and they're trying to bring down the range racks. I know the melee will regenerate, so they just want the range racks, and then bail. Leap is there for Loda, which he will now use and give everybody the movement speed to get back out again. Good trade from Alliance, because this time around, whenever they kill someone now, there's going to take a long time. <laughs> they're actually going to go back in. Look for the arrow. Look for the arrow. But if Loda triggers it, then he's going to reveal himself. They just want to get these quick racks. Backdoor regen's not going to be there for it. 
Mirror Image is up as well. They clean up most of the creep wave, which is Admiral Bulldog's aura. Skew it down. There's no RP, and now Admiral Bulldog. No BKB either. Level Death on Arsad. He'll take a fall on this one. S-Force also jumped in. They have taken the full Raxing here. At the same time, Gems on the deck. Loader hexed up. RK trying to TP himself out this one. Frostbitten and Quop holding to pick off that Lich. EGM continues to steal abilities in the middle of the fight too, but Line of Heaven will get a double kill out here. And they do finish up the full Raxing, but at the same time, they lose out a couple of key heroes here, Alliance. This is definitely still anyone's game. Like, it's it's very close. There's four Raxes down on both sides. I think it can go either way still. It, it all comes down to Solo. He really needs to step up his game with this Magnus. It was a beautiful executed RP into the Crystal Maiden Ultimate combo, but it's, it just wasn't enough. They really desperately needed the DPS from the Luna. Uh, but they will be able to pick up this Roshan now. Alliance is in no shape to contest this at all. I was actually interested to see why Arke was surviving as long as he was. Like, he just stood his ground through a Queen of Pain ultimate, barely lost any HP. He actually <laughs> has a pipe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the greedy supports, man. But it's, it's funny because we always classed Arsad as well as NS as possibly two of the most greedy supports in the European scene. Like, they would take from their carries in order to get their items. It's not so much greedy support, it's just how the game has developed and, and now you need items on everyone to be able to fight into this late game and, and just generally enforcing all the strength of all your heroes because you're not, you're not stronger than your weakest link. And Solo, how's he looking? It's not looking good. Uh, it looks like he's just going Lincoln Sphere instead. I think, I think that's a hex. You, mean, th you think it's just going to be inside the vice? Uh, it'd be super greedy to go for it in his sphere. It doesn't really offer you as much as you need to. Mm -hmm. It's almost got the money for the full Lincoln Sphere and the side of the vice. If if he waits an extra 500 gold, then we know it. They could really use the side of the vice, I think. Yeah. Especially the to get them like if you get the hex off before the BKB, you can actually completely burst down the hero and not have having to worry about. I think Luna may be a little bit annoyed pretty shortly. With a butterfly coming up on Loader, and he went Daedalus as his next item instead of the Monkey King bar. Yeah, just another reason to why you need the Scythe of Isis. <laughs> just get rid of that evasion. But they're going to give Loader that farm on bottom lane, unless Rubik wants to take the rest of it. But it's not that much. These creeps, like, the income now... Like, it's, it's at this point you really want to make the most out of the changes to the to the hero gold. Because those kills are worth a hell of a lot now. Yeah. I'm not in sure fact, I what do we got? We got Heaven's item choice. He, he went for a Daedalus rather than go for the uh, butterfly. I mean, obviously, Loda had the uh, the Monkey King bar, and he does need to dish out a lot of damage in the and the RP. But butterfly is just so good on that hero. Mhm. Mm well, isn't isn't it like uh, we? I, I call it the rapier build. When you have Manta, you have butterfly, satanic. and you have Satanic yeah. with your treads. It's just a rapier build because you know that no matter what happens, you'll be able to live through a fight. Obviously, with the BKB too. Yeah, I still think it'd be even better with the Butterfly rather than the Daedalus, because if you do go for a Radio, you don't actually have to rely on the crits. Mm. You're going to dish out plenty of damage. At the same time, too, you can look at it from the other angle, saying how how easy is it for Alliance to push into the base right now up against VP. Light of Heaven throws out three attacks, and the Crit Wave is gone. Is that going to be Lotus full? Yep. Full Butterfly. He's going to buy out for this, too. Considering his buyback, and she is ready, but he's just short. I don't think Loda thinks he can die in these fights, so it would be really key for Vertus to have the side of Ice up on the Magnus as well. He doesn't have it quite yet. He's 500 gold short. I would actually have waited, like let him farm up the jungle spots. Before they do this five man push down the bottom. Yeah. A lot of him just soaking up all the gold right now. If they had that oh, additional wow. side of Ice, that would help a lot. They have to come back. That's a gem of two side casual lying in there. <laughs> it's like, why do you need it when you got Necro books for, for God? And as far as Alliance go, well. It's inside the dire side. <laughs> What's the buyback status on everyone now? They should be up for Virtus Pro again. We've got one Bears. for Luna, one for Lich. Actually, um, another minute on everyone. I don't think we're going to see any fighting for the next minute then. As everyone waits it out. Remember to the other change they made to the buybacks. Yeah, 25% additional when you buyback. Was it 25 or 50%? 25% mm. longer death duration for your next death. In that case, I apologize for last night. <laughs> so I'll say 50% last night. Oh, I thought you were talking to a girl. So, what's the roast time on? <laughs> uh, rush timer. It's still counting down, man. Okay. Aegis is going to be reclaimed, uh, well, shortly. Like if you you do the new counter now. Yeah, One, yeah. two, three, four. I'm hearing... Was I hearing just quite bolty? No. I'm hearing things, man. 
Side advice is there for him. Look at his money, too. 3,000 gold. At the same time, Doombringer. Like, he should be Mr. Moneybags. He's sitting at, the th at the only the third highest net worth. Loader is by far ahead of everybody. Another 4,000 on top of the, of, the, of the Lunar. With Butterfly done. He only needs to finish up his Satanic right now, and then maybe BTs. And he is maxed. And he is full six slotted. It's fun to see Admiral Bulldog running around with, with the double boots. Could sell the face boots and get off the, another plate mail for him for the or or a hyperstone for the AC. But that does seem to be the obvious item choice for him. Looks <laughs> like he prefers the movement speed instead. That is pro smoke movement gonna go around the Roshan pit at the same time. Alliance under the cover of their frost armor. These guys are not easy to pick off. Twenty eight armor over on a clockwork. Not not to mention what's gonna happen with Blade Mail later on. And EGM just tries to keep these lanes. As long as the top lane and the middle lane gains momentum, Alliance, I think, will be happy enough to deal. Like, they've, they've still got this range racks in the mid. So their their lanes in the middle have the advantage here. Oh, I actually thought the book had taken care of that. I only got, only got the melee by the looks of it. And now they've got one minute until this Aegis is reclaimed. They wanted to fight. They wanted to use this Aegis for something, but they haven't found out a thing. I actually like the new change to Aegis. Remember in, in, in olden time when you would always want to sacrifice your, like, suicide in with your Aegis because you just wanted to respawn with full health and full mana before you died? Mm hmm Or before it expired. So the change to it where you just regenerate everything in five seconds is nice. Thirty seconds. They're gonna back off. I think they know. Yep. Especially when this is happening. Push has come up the middle lane. The Clockwork Illusions help to push that out as well. But Light of Heaven can easily take care of these creep waves when they come in, come in even with Mega Creeps. Like, that's why, if, even if this goes down like three racks, as long as Light of Heaven is standing, he can hold out most of the creep wave. Yeah, even up against Megas. Virtus Pro should be satisfied with actually waiting it out and, and getting some more key items on, on not just Light of Heaven, but on Queen of Pain and, and Magnus as well. They really benefit from get adding on items to the inventory right now, whereas Alliance is sitting on almost full inventory on, on both their key heroes. I'm actually wondering what God's going to be doing with the 3.6k. Like, I'm wondering if it's almost worth going higher, higher levels of DPS on him. Like, ju just to also... I don't think a Desolator would be bad by any means. Shivas is, is an item choice as well. I was actually thinking Scardi out of everything. For, for God. Higher stats, high DPS. We now have a Blink Dagger to a BKB on a Crystal Maiden. <laughs> but this is our side also buying out for this item. Like, there's no holding back here. And with a five-man push from from Alliance, and they're coming down the weakest lane of theirs, the one lane where they couldn't take a Raskos to this Tier 2 tower, VP won't want to fight outside. I think the, the buyback status is going to mean a whole lot right now. We have it on Queen of Pain from the Dire side, and that's about it. EGM is looking for a nice quick steal on something. All of Alliance has buyback, so they're definitely gonna try and push their advantage. I think they also know the Aegis is down, so they don't have to worry about Luna coming back up. I think they really want to use the, their buybacks, because you still have to remember, like this push can, if it fails and they don't get the racks and they have to buy back. Yeah, but it's then fine, they have double uh, boots of travel on their carries, so they can mm. easily afford this push. It's just if, if they can't finish the job, they're gonna be so much more punished if they lose the next fight. Yeah, but that's assuming you, you die seven times. True. And they do have the item advances, and they do realize that right now they do have full inventories, and w whereas Luna is still lagging at least one core item. Mm. I, I definitely think they should push their advances right now. Because they do, they do have one. The well, Line of Heaven takes it away from Line of Heaven is actually going for the Divine Ravier. Or is he? Either that or he goes to the Monkey King Bar. He's 300 gold away from having the Monkey King Bar at least. That would be a very re weird item choice. I mean, I know Loader has a butterfly, but you might as well go go all out if you have to do an all out damage thing like that. Look at that line being drawn, saying, God, please, pu please push out the mid. You can TP back when we need you. Wow, that range of the steel. That's a huge range. That's it's the Aconim Scepter that buffs it up. It yeah. buffs up the range as well. I kind of just, I, I've, I haven't seen it beating that range before. Obviously with the changes, I haven't really seen Aconim Scepter on a Rubik before either. But this middle lane hasn't pushed out. We've still got the range buff up creeps in the mid that are the, in, fa in favor of Alliance. Ooh, Admiral Bulldog is actually trying to sneak in a kill Ooh. of God on the top lane. He's gonna go into Shadow Blade now. Here we go. Around the corner. 
And it will be God. He can doom him up almost instantly. And God doesn't have his Necro units pushing out this lane. So then, straight up do before he hits. Then into the Shiva's guard. And he may have enough damage to finish this job. Oh, With level definitely. death, he's got it. That's the instant buyback. No waiting whatsoever. I actually would have sat on that because he, he really, like, if, had he thought about it, Admiral Bulldog. Oh, it's because Doom is down, so now they're going to push instead. Regen yeah, okay, that makes sense. Because Admiral Bulldog couldn't have TP'd back to the lane, so there's no need for him to actually buy back. There's also the other part, the Roshan's now up again too. And VP want to take this up very, very quickly. If you got Doom on cooldown, give that a shot. But they have to be very quick about this. Necro units go down. Light of Heaven's on his way again. Oh, he did go for the Monkey King bar. Yeah. He wants to straight up DPS. And look at Loda. He wants to make him stop going Roshan. If a, if Virtus Pro are fast enough on this, they're gonna be it's gonna be good for them. Both Aegis and Cheese for the fight, but Arrow, it connects on God. That's a good five second stun. NS gets a decent ultimate off as well, but Loda, he just had a lot of damage to this. Oh! Oh! Loda blocked him! And now Loda's gonna be hexed up. They jump up the RP as she grabbed on him, then skewers him back down again with a Lich Helmet bouncing around. This minimal damage line of heaven just tanks the whole thing up anyway, and then turns around a damage on RK as well as on EGM. Loda has brought back into this game. But God's here as well, looking for the kill on Arke, and look at the damage from Line of Heaven. They've oh, still sick. got troubles back at base, where Ennis is trying to hold up against Mega Creeps, and now up the middle, Mirana Ultimate's trying to get EGM in close, Admiral Bulldog, level death solo, he's got Skewer in two seconds, one second, they can see him in there, Skewer up to the high ground, he's still ticking out from this, but he should be okay. TP's back to base to heal faster. He's fine. So they managed to get the Aegis Immortal up on Queen of Pain. It looks like cheese had to be used during that fight. Incredible how much of a difference that made that the fact that Loda blocked the hook shot from S4 completely made them lose that fight Radiant's and then causing Loda to die. And again, Solo only hit one with RP, but he did hit Loda, so that was all they needed. Yeah. Essentially, he could have had like throughout the game, but also in this fight, he could have had better RPs. I'm not too impressed with it. I'm sure he's trying his best, but. I mean, he got Loda in this fight, and that, that was all that really mattered. Now that Loda had to use his bite back, and... Oh god, Admiral Bulldog. It's a good thing go he's got it. high movement speed with that, but when the sting and the strike goes, Admiral Bulldog's now out of vision range. That's unlucky for them. Light of Heaven's gonna come in, Admiral Bulldog just pops the BKB. The reason he actually got out of, of vision range was because the Centaur stomped the Necromicon. So the true side creep was held in place. It's very unfortunate, especially because right before the Shadow Strike actually landed on him. Now, we're missing some key next items coming up from Alliance. Like, you, you see Light of Heaven picking up his Monkey King bar. He's on his way to finishing up the full Satanic as well. But, like, Loda needs to finish up his Satanic. He still needs to get a lot more farm before he can do that. And on top of that, like, S4. He's got Blade Mal as well as Mech 53 minutes into this game. 3,500 gold. We don't see an Aghanim Scepter. We don't see any other kind of item up on him. EGM is, in fact, getting more money than we're seeing coming in for S4. RK, I'm not going to say the same thing for him. He's got 2.5k gold in the bank. And Admiral Baldov with 2.4. He just spent half of his money. As far as been stuck on... on the we got Refresher Orb Doom. Oh, that's a good item choice. I was thinking about it earlier, but... And now jump in. EGM, oh Mr. God. RP, Lich Ultimate as well. S4 jumped in, they hexed him up. He's taking a lot of damage here, but gets the Meg Charge off and Crystal Maiden also goes down. That Lich Ultimate just destroyed Virtus Pro with the initiation in from EGM. Oh man, we've got TPs coming back to base because the bottom lane still pushed in a very, very long way. Alliance don't feel confident to go in for the GG, but now Refresher is up for Admiral Bulldog. And look at all the buybacks. Doom, CM, Lich, and Venom are the only ones that don't have it on a cooldown timer. <laughs> and Aga being the only one that can actually afford it. Man, I didn't realize EGM was still holding that RP that long. He can't. He couldn't even steal beforehand. Like it's just a straight jump in. And 3.4k gold up on Arke. Yeah, I don't think Virtus Pro at all expected him to still have RP. Mm. I wasn't looking for it, but still saw EGM with the jump. And VP, like, they've got their three cores up. Venomans will come back to life again. Doesn't have his ultimate for this fight. Crystal Maiden also can be in the same boat. But then again, she does have, like, Blink BKB. And the fact that S4... S4 still managed to live through that fight. Like, he got his mech and his blade mail off after jumping smack bang into the middle of it after the initial RP. No, unless he bought something, he didn't. 
No, he's got his its own cooldown. Yeah, no, he 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 died he died during the fight, yeah. but when he jumped in, he was still able to get everything off before he died. Like he tanked up most of that lunar eclipse. Lord is pushing at the bottom lane. Mr. BT is now for him. So it really is just the Satanic. Okay, I still kind of want to see him buy up an Aghanim Scepter. <laughs> but with 3.5k gold, and he wants to keep it... He's the only person on the map right now that can buy back. Because Admiral Bulldog does have the full refresher. Oh, 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 oh. What? Oh, loader. That can't have even been a misclick. Because Man of Style as well as BTs are on cooldown. He just put his BKB down to four seconds. Oh, he was trying to change him to his last and then... Ah, okay, that'll, that'll explain it. Whoops. <laughs> Happens to even the best of us. Especially when you hit almost one hour into a game two. But Lions do want to try and wrap this up 2-0. Roshan, so we've got three minutes, 20 seconds on him. So just before the one hour mark, Roshan will come back to life again. So that's a little bit quicker than normal. But look at look, VP do not want to go out. If they're if they're taking this fight, they fight it inside their base. And until then, Luna farming off the off lane needs this satanic done. Do you think they're gonna wait for an, an additional three minutes to everyone has their buybacks back? You think Alliance doing that? Uh, I don't know, because it's it's gonna hurt both teams as much. Like both teams can just end up killing each other off. If one core hero survives. You win this game. Because everyone's going to be in the silence for like, like 120 seconds. It's going to be the, the time when everybody... We could literally sit here as casters for two minutes and just have absolutely nothing to talk about because no one will be alive. Yeah, I think it would be wise to just wait for Roshan and, and hope to get off. It does feel like it. But then you got Luna doing her thing. Like, she's pushing out the top lane. And that's the, that's the lane advantage for VP. Like, they can defend from inside their base. They put the Wall of Wards up here from, from NS. And this top lane just keeps pressuring in, and Alliance have to go back at one point. The difference is Alliance has boosted travels, whereas VP doesn't. <laughs> and Alliance still has a, a marginal item advantage. It's, it's fading, though, especially if Magnus has item progression. Does he, though? Nope. He does not. not really. But they smoke up deep. Arrow's gonna fly up. Won't connect. Got a funny feeling either Solar just cleaning up his inventory slot or he is looking to jump in and get an RP. And already S4, the cogs go down and S through the ulti out. And S4's already goes blade mount and it's actually killing himself off by attacking like he is. And he has to back himself out of this oh, one. Killed the book. Yeah, they got rid of the books. Oh, Lord, I but all of Alliance is still up and running. <laughs> and has actually lived through that, going in like a man. He actually has a gun himself, but that's very annoying to play against even at the later stages of the game. The problem is though he still uses ulti and that cooldown is still very, very high for him. It's two minutes per, for the cooldown. And maybe we are right, but you got to remember too, like in one minute you get the chance that Roshan respawns. We know he's going to spawn up, but the Lions could find themselves being here for six minutes in their minds until Roshan actually comes up. Because they've already spent two of their minutes doing it. And they keep trying to pressure it out. This top lane is somehow getting momentum for the Radiant side. I'm hearing a Lichalti. Virtus Pro is just paying for another minute. Just wait for I'm not seeing it yet. Minute. Now RP! Oh, there we go. There's your three! And now, with Light of Heaven, with the Eclipse and the straight-up attack, S4, he's gonna go down right now. They lose it, but look at 109 seconds. Two minutes on the sideline, and they both buy back here. It's a triple kill for Light of Heaven. Wow, that's perfect. Solo completely making up for every whiff, though. <laughs> not as good RP. He ran around the secret shop and actually went up behind them and landed a perfect RP into the follow-up from VP. That was beautiful to watch. Well, and now they're going to get rewarded for their efforts. They 20 seconds until Roshan spawns. But they don't know that. So they, they're gonna, they're gonna, and it's going to throw a ward in there, and they'll know it almost instantly. Yeah, but they have one minute. They could easily go down middle lane. Mm. And look at Loda. Yeah, he BT top. He's trying to force them to come back right now. Yeah. That's the problem. Are they? Or they could they could take a lot of damage on this top lane if they don't defend it. Arsa as well as Solo's coming up for it. And now they <laughs> see that Roshan's up too. Do they turn? Oh, or do they keep decision going? Decision making, decision making. They're gonna keep going. The book is uh, up from, from God. Lola cannot come, come home. There is only the Doom to defend. Get in. Well, Lola's got 12 seconds. Get in. They got fortification though. It'll buy him the time. It'll buy him the time. But up against Light of Heaven. <laughs> that was oh, right. They're going for Rose now. Yeah. Double BTs. CM and the Magnus both purchasing up BTs. I think they want to end this. You got Necro units as well as one Lunar Illusion. 
which is bouncing out and doing the damage required. You know, I think they could definitely have greeted that and actually taken the tower down at least without losing anyone. Three BTs, five BTs in total on the map. And we cross over the one hour mark between these two teams. Rockets will fly in and now is scouting at NS who thought maybe he could solo this one up but with Light of Heaven in here, Roshan, he's not going to last long. Marana ulti will now trigger. Oh. They're coming in looking for it. The Rockets are still flying oh. in. NS is low Look on life. Hookshot. Look for the hookshot. Where is S4? He's too far away. It's a level 3 ultimate. Now he's in range. He can jump himself in on God. Light There's already the Doom getting there and the Lich ultimate bouncing around inside. Roshan killed by the Dire. The Aegis Immortal and Cheese is on the deck. Aegis picked up by Admiral Bulldog and he denied the Cheese. The Clockwork Latch won't go. Both. Luna as well as Quop have to buy back into this one. Arke will tick out from the Venomancer. So he's on the sideline, but he already did the job required. And EGM hiding in the tree line. The gem is there. He wants to get back and look back at the base. There's still tier four towers going down for Alliance. EGM caught out as well. Necro units on the, on the line right now. RP is available and EGM a pick up a throw down. So Rubik on the sidelines as well. No buyback available for any player on the map right now. And they don't want to look at Rubik's death timer. 70 seconds for that Rubik. There are no buybacks. This is... Uh, does Magnus have BOTs? Can they go for it now? Magnus, Magnus and CM both bought BTs. They could go for it. Have Light of Heaven and... And because and and the Refresher Doom is also down as well. But they have the Aegis on Admiral Bulldog. That was a big thing. The fact that VP didn't take an Aegis or a Cheese out from this, I think has them a little bit more concerned. Yeah. And, and yeah, we're looking at Light of Heaven trying to build into a new item as well. He's trying to get that butterfly up and he running on him. his Helm of Dominator instead of getting a Satanic. That's a weird... Especially considering the amount of DPS coming out in the fight. Like, what are you looking to evade when you've got, like, Lunar... Uh, Marana is the one dishing out most of the damage. And if he gets a Satanic up and running, he will outlast the Lunar. This just must be an all-in for Light of Heaven. It's damage on nothing. Look at here. It's over, like, 500 damage per hit he's dishing out. As crits of, like, that was 1,242 crit I just saw coming out from him. Arrow. Oh, Ooh, that's a long stun. It's just buying time. Rubik respawns in five seconds. Yeah. They managed to Lotus wait out a minute and a half. They push this. Doom is back up now. RP is up, but oh. We don't have refresher, and now S4 keeps him out. Glyph is up. There's Glyph. Radio yep. Go. Glyph will be used. Admiral Bulldog tries to come in close. Had to get rid of the Necro units, though, so his whole surprise element goes out the window. Lotus Pro needs to back off. Yeah, look at the arrow scouting out for Loda. Sees absolutely nothing. And VP have. God's got to defend up that top lane. And we've got <laughs> Lincolns. I don't think anything's on that courier of theirs. No, it's not. On that bottom lane as well. Loda. What he would give for some extra AoE clearance apart from having to use Starfall every single time. At least he can tank up most of it. And the catapults will also, like, he rips through it. There's your Lincoln Sphere up now for the Queen of Pain. But look at his items. He's got three core items here and nothing else. But he feels at the Lincolns. And remember, too, the change to Lincolns. You could now cast Lincolns on somebody else. He's probably going to give that effect over to Light of Heaven. No. He's, he... it's, if, if he's waiting for Doom, Light of Heaven's their key. Yeah, he does. He oh. wants Light of Heaven to survive. This is the new change to Lincoln Sphere, which just makes your carry basically have a Lincoln Sphere as well. You could basically call this a seven-slotted Luna. The thing is, though, God is the one being doomed in every fight. But Light of Heaven's the one doing the DPS. Who do who do you save? Who do, like Light of Heaven can hold off any creep wave that comes in and solely do all the damage he's searching for, like all all the damage the VP searching for, because. What are you getting out? Your Necro books go, you get your side of the vice off, and you've basically done your job. Maybe you can nuke down a support or two, but you've got BKBs up and running on two of the cores, so your Sonic Wave's not going to do any kind of damage you're really looking for, unless you're able to wait the Here timing out Here's for the, the four seconds. In. Yep, Observer Ward up. They run in with the smoke, and yeah, oh, look, look, look at the line being drawn. VP know this exactly. Loader could two hit down this tower if he wants to, but he doesn't also have any kind of support here. So they're smoked inside the base. This will run out in five seconds. And NS, he's the closest one. Arrow will fly. Light of Heaven, not going to waste Lincoln Sphere charge on him. And they just push the creep wave in. A little bit deeper is Arke, hiding in the tree line. EGM's also in the neighborhood looking for a good steal. And they're using the creep wave momentum to get in. Yep, Lincoln Sphere again up on Light of Heaven. Now it's been triggered. I'm not quite sure what actually triggered that one. And now Clockwork. Oh, he went through two! 
pushes them back. Line of Heaven will pop the BKB. RP on the back. Corp holding as well, but the telekinesis from EGM dragging Solo up to Admiral Bulldog. Doesn't get locked out here. In fact, I think the RP was just stolen then by EGM. Nailing at the back end. The Lich holding will push VP back inside their base. And buybacks, they're not there. Luna can't come back for another one minute. This is Alliance's game. And the GG call comes out from NS. What a nail-biting game. Oh. What an in initiate by S4 at the very end of it. He hadn't been much of a factor throughout the late game, but he definitely came in and proved his work. Yeah. That was just... When he was able to latch those two out, and even EGM, when you got... And that skewer couldn't drag them back out again, it would have split the fight up completely. And then he also stole the RP later, and it was a little bit to the south of our screen. He was able to get that kill off, but... 65, 66 minutes. We will end our game in Alliance. Take it out, 2-0, but this is only our first game of tonight, peoples. We're coming back here in a couple of moments' time with Speed Gaming going up against Dignitas. So we're off to USE service in this game hey. and uh, going to have ourselves a little bit of fun, guys. So stay tuned, and we'll be back here with more action from the Dota 2 Championships League.